Today, we are going over every Guardian and Abyss Raid in Tier 2 as a Mayhem Berserker. We're still RPing his guts and we're as strong as ever. And we're going to make sure every other class knows their place because Zerker Gang's always going to be at the top. But in Tier 2, we have some upgraded skills. So the build, combat positioning, stats, and engraving are all going to be updated in this video. So if you haven't subscribed, it's time to glow up with the Zerker Gang. My name's Clay Cedix. And we're running right into it. And lighting this off, we're going to go over our updated build. And well, none of the skills have changed. We upgraded Chainsword to level 7 and Swordstorm to level 10. This is massive and is one of your hardest hitting abilities now. So now I'm going to go over our updated combos just so you can see what we're all about. And our first combo is going to be our ultimate combo, which is Red Dust, Chainsword, and then you all... Nothing's more satisfying than that. Now our second updated combo is going to be Red Dust, Chainsword, Spin... Sword Storm, Finishing Strike, and then Dark Rush. After that, you float around for a couple seconds, charge your Strike Wave up. You're going to get the third and fourth ticks with the Chainsword. And then you're going to Hellblade to finish it off to make sure you have the buff from Chainsword the entire time on the Hellblade. As you can see, then you're waiting a couple more seconds, and the Chainsword's going to line directly up with the Sword Storm, letting you start your next burst rotation combo. Letting you get an insane amount of damage off. If you wait a couple extra seconds, you can obviously just Dark Rush again. And you can see how crazy the rotation goes. And how much flow this build has a Berserker in general. You're going to be able to be popping endgame screens like this all the time. I am. And it never gets old. The stats we're going to go for are 70% crit and 30% swiftness. It's going to round you out and make you insanely strong. And the engravings are still maxed out madness with everything else you can get just being a bonus. It's all going to be linked in the description. So make sure you check it out. And there's constant updates in the Discord to keep you at the very top if you're a Berserker. And you're going to be getting gems in tier 2. So make sure they're on decent abilities. But the biggest thing you're going to have to have is Berserk Fury. I'm going to show the difference between Berserk Fury and Chains of Vengeance. But you really notice how much stronger Berserk Fury is on your burst. And when you start meshing all this together, you realize we play the only relevant class in the entire game, and it's about time everyone else realized it. Special shout out to the supporting roles that make it possible, but now it's time for our raids. It's so trash. And that's how they're going to go if you don't have your pocket bard with you. But we're going to start at raid level 3. The consumables that you need are HP pots, Panchia to cleanse, scarecrows, bombs, and flares. Remember, bring flares in party order one, two, three, four. Doesn't matter. If you're number one, you flare, then it's number two's turn. Keep the order up and don't be a cheap rat. But our first boss is going to be Dark Legios. He's literally free. He's going to cast some dark explosions. And as long as you don't get to like 10 stacks, he's literally not going to do anything. If you watch the tier one video, you already know the safest spot for a doggo is behind him. By the time you actually get to him, you're just going to gear check him. So he's basically just a W key. I solo them for the first time I did it. It was too easy. But our second one, Hell Gaia, and she's probably one of my favorite looking boss in the entire game. And her only big mechanic is when she leans down and tries to charge up. All you have to do is use a bunch of stagger skills to break her out of that so she doesn't light on fire and do more damage. I basically neutralized it solo with Strike Blade and Hellblade, so it's super easy. So most classes should be able to handle this pretty well. And her safe spaces are usually behind her or whatever wing isn't lighting up. Just don't get caught in front of her. Other than that, it's blast off, full W key. And she's basically just as easy as Dart Legios, except she's extremely easy to counter because when she turns blue, she has a pretty long animation and it's so free but number three kelvent is the giant dragon king of level three and he's actually fun to fight like most dragons the safe space are his wings his front and back are big danger tail swipe tornadoes and he has a ground glyph on the ground that you need to make sure you get out of when he jumps away and shoots the tornadoes for do not get hit by them they actually mess you up but this man actually has a real mechanic and he spawns a bunch of balls around him and they start collapsing towards the boss you have to blow the balls up or he's going to catch them and he's going to enrage so kill the balls full w key don't get hit. Number four in level two, Akiatis. And this guy is actually just eight. He just spams a bunch of random, really glowy white skills. So his safe space is wherever there isn't a thing exploding. And uh, just try and keep him in the middle of his area so that you don't have to deal with it. If it gets too full of stuff, just kite him out of it. Doesn't really have a lot, but if you get a white circle on you pulsing, basically walk it out. It's going to drop a pool of death under you. So don't drop it around the boss. But eventually he's going to spawn two adds and you're going to have to blow them both up and he's going to have a color of a shield around him. You're going to have to grab the corresponding color, two people at the same time. You throw the gem at him, hits it, make sure you throw it in the center. When you don't, he just ignores it. It hits him, then you grab the next gem for his next shield color, throw it again. Next thing you know, you're out of that phase. If you don't, cast a giant one shot. Next thing you know, you're dead. Not the vibe. Other than that, full W key. Again, we don't even think about it. It's full Zerker brain all the time. It, the boss isn't that hard. He's just really annoying. So stop thinking, start killing. But now for raid level four. 
and lighten it off with Frost Hell Gaia. Just like the other burbs, she's super easy to counter, but she jumps around a lot more and wants to put you on ice. And the trick is to do it to her first, so knock her down as much as possible and dodge around. Having Panchee on this fight is actually really helpful because being slowed is kind of a death sentence if you don't have innate move speed. Again, the safe spaces are behind her and whatever wing isn't lit up and you're going to have to break her from charging up again. But she's going to do a lot of jumping and slamming into the ground. But if you don't get hit, it's honestly just face roll. If you're feeling spicy, bring some thunder potions. She's super weak to thunder. So all you do is pop those. Next thing you know, she's going to lose so much HP so fast. You're just going to run through this again. The W key Zerker brain, full effect on this boss. Number two in level four, Lava Turtle Boy, Mr. Cro-Manium himself. And if you watched a previous raid guide about Turtle Boys, you're set. But this man has the legs quiver jump again. So when he starts shaking, make a big run for it because you don't want him blowing his load on you. So as with usual with Turtle Boys, the safe zone is going to be behind him and far away from him whenever he's jumping. His only special ability is these volcanoes and all you have to do is break them before they have a chance to do anything. He's super easy, just don't think about it. He spawns the volcanoes, you kill the volcanoes. You break his shell, you smash him to death. The only difference between him and the other turtle boys, when he hits 25% or 30% HP, he starts pulsing fire constantly. And it's supposed to be like a DPS check, but like, why do we need DPS? We're a berserker. We could solo him from 30 to zero if we really wanted to. So blast off and nuke him down and break him as much as you can because turtle boys need their shells to be in tank mode. And we don't want any of that. We just want to see big crits all day. But now number three in level four is Levanos, and he's just a big tree to chop down. Make sure you don't tell Amazon we're cutting down the forest. He starts super armored, so he takes really low damage. You're going to have to break him with bombs or high stagger skills. Really recommend just running in four destruction bombs to the mouth, pop him. That's it. Every time he gets big armor with damage reduction, just bomb him, get him out of it, smash him to death. When he falls down, blow all your CDs and nuke him as hard as you can. And after that, there's going to be a bunch of cones and a whole bunch of shiny boys. Don't stand in any of those. So you're going to need to be standing in some weird places on him. And basically anytime there isn't a ground glyph or a fire cone, it's a good place to stand. And if he looks at you, just try and get away so he doesn't slam dunk you or spin to win you like Garen. But as you notice, the later bosses and tears, they seem to have a little special mechanic. And this guy just spawns a little glowy tree that makes him completely immune to damage. The best way to deal with it is drop a scarecrow on the ground. He goes and attacks that. You go blast the tree. The other way to deal with it is he will go to attack one person. And until he does the, an attack animation, he will keep chasing that person. So if he's chasing you, Kite him away from the tree, let the other three homies blast off. Next thing you know, he's right out of that phase. Bust him again. Next thing you know, he's burnt. He's done. And finally, the last boss in raid level four, Albert has to. Albert has to. Albert. Tall boy. This guy was full W key Zerg. Absolutely no fucks were given here. We read the strat. I mean, Blanky read the strat and he explained it and I didn't listen. And what I found out is if you just do enough damage to this man, you burn him out of his phase so fast that he doesn't do his five different one shot mechanics. So this is really the only time where you actually have to go huge damage to completely negate everything this guy can do. Go huge W, big dick damage, ignore that he exists. And usually if he's going to one shot you, just go to the opposite color or jump in a tornado or if he fly, I don't know. He has so many things. Just keep burning him as hard as you can and kill him. We actually wiped him like two or three times and just kept running it down until we just did enough damage to burn him out of it. His only real mechanic is that he spawns these orbs around the room. You got to blow the orbs up or he's going to get big damage. You don't want him to get big damage. He's already crazy annoying. And the blue orb gives you damage reduction. So you pick it up and you don't die. And that's it. He's actually really easy and his safe spaces are wherever you make them to be. It's a crazy chaotic fight with a million different abilities because he has five different phases and five different one shot mechanics. So if you just go full Zerker brain through it, you win. And if you aren't a Zerker, make sure you grab one because that's the only way you're really getting through this as fast as you can. But now for our Abyssal Raids and the meme tier that probably shouldn't exist. And starting with the Road of Lament, this dude is basically a Beyblade. He's going to shoot red shit everywhere and spin around. The mechanic here is you get a debuff, you're going to drop a puddle on the ground. Drop the puddle, not in the middle of the room, make it in a nice corner. That would be ideal. Thank you. Unlike us, who dropped it wherever we wanted and just ran into him with no brain power whatsoever. You just try and stay in the middle and blast off and don't stand in the red stuff. And when he's spinning, just don't get hit by the laser beam. That's it. So if you bring a bunch of stagger skills and whirlwind bombs to put him on the ground, it's going to make it a lot easier. That way he can't really cast at you and you can just kill him. But the second boss with the god tier ghost dies that is actually kind of annoying. She dashes around a lot. So scarecrows and taunts are super quality life on this boss and bring tons of stagger skills to knock her down. You'll just be gaming. Her thick thigh mechanic is actually just to spawn a bunch of orbs and then one shot. So we'll get one shot and you can W key her like the last nine bosses. The way to do this is she's going to spawn all these orbs around the room. If you get hit by a red one, you're done. But you have to grab three yellow orbs to get the circle around you to break the orbs after the phase. You get hit by a red orb while you're collecting yellow orbs, then you have to restart and get three more yellow orbs. So all four party members need three golden orbs and you have to spread out evenly around the boss. 
and then it's going to pulse and it's going to tick down. It's so it it doesn't matter. Just pulse down the red orbs. Don't let any hit her, and it's easy. W key free mode. It's over. But if one person doesn't get the buff or dies, you're actually done. Like you're you're going to wipe. So the easiest way to deal with her is keep knocking her down, keep taunting her, and blast off. Actually, a pretty easy fight, but it is actually really fun too. But now for the Forge of Fallen Pride, and the first boss is the Dragon Master. He just summons dragons. You kill them. Fights face roll easy. Safe space, wherever you want it to be. He's going to be casting big AoE circles. Just spread out in the room. Don't clip anyone else. If you sign numbers to corners, that's pretty easy. But I mean, you really just don't hit anybody with the circle. It's not that bad. But you can basically just yo him because he's a joke. But at some point, you're going to get a notification that he's a beefy boy. And this is when you slam some whirlwind grenades into him and dump all your stagger skills. Because you have to break his little break bar and he's going to lose all his damage reduction. The fight's that simple. Just slam him down. No problems. But now for the last boss in the arc of arrogance, Phantom Lord, King of the Flame. And he doesn't have a lot to him. He just basically spazzes out and casts a random garbage spells and dodges them. You don't really need a lot of consumables here, but whirlwinds are okay for the knock. I prefer Dark Bomb for the 20% damage increase for me personally, because I just like popping off. And his main mechanic is he's going to glow a color and spawn two Phantoms. Just kill the right color. And I know matching colors is hard, but I know you can do it. So you stand in the circle that it drops for the color that he's glowing. You don't get one-shotted. And then you just keep WK in the boss. Enjoy your free gold and your loot. And that is all of the Ark of Arrogance bosses. But now we're into the Gate of Paradise. It is one of the coolest raids in the game. And when you look at the first boss and know that your Scoob is Steven, you're going to have a better time than anyone else. This boss has only a few mechanics and the bleeds in poison. Hydra is secondary to everything. So when the shark spawns, everyone should stop and focus it down immediately. It's going to reduce the damage you take in your scuba steve suits because you only get one. And if you get broken out of it, you're going to drown. And you don't want to drown. So let's not do that. You're going to burn the shark boy and then finish off the hydra. You're done. First boss is over. And honestly, it's one of the most fun bosses because it just refreshes you and reminds you how much the devs actually care about this game. The second boss is the Zerker Gang's Nightmare. No more W can. We got to go half throttle on this one and spread out around him so he doesn't do this kickback. Because it's going to mess you up a little bit. And if you get five debuffs, he's going to freeze you. So Panchee is pretty valuable here for just ripping those stacks off. And make sure you break everybody out that gets bubbled. Because that's going to be one of the biggest things that gets you killed here. His big mechanic is an AoE one shot. And you have to get into this yellow circle. So make sure that nobody's going for air if he hasn't just cast this. Because if it ends up in the middle of nowhere, it's going to kill your whole party. So everybody stays around him. He casts this ability. You all stack in. After this ability is over, everybody goes and gets oxygen. Recollapses on the boss, rinse and repeat. You're going to finish them off in no time. And how you get auction is you just go click on the kelp or you stand in the bubbles and you're going to be topped up again, ready to breathe and ready to pump. But he switches up at 10 bars because you cut his legs off. Kind of savage, honestly. But then he's molding and has the same one shot mechanic as before, but he crawls around, freezing you. It's actually creepy. So the safe space is behind him and blast off. Avoid the one shot mechanic and don't get frozen. Anybody who does, just break them out. He's going to jump backwards or crawl backwards and then push the beam out in front of him and run forward. So make sure you're just never in front of this boss like that and you can enjoy your rewards no problem. But now for part two, Tranquil Carcosa and our first boss is Gangplank. Now I recommend you have HP pot whirlwind grenades and stopwatch for this one. And the stopwatch for this is just in case you make a massive mistake. All the attacks from these next bosses are going to start reducing your breath. So get hit at the wrong time and you're probably going to wipe the raid. He has a shit ton of glyphs to avoid and there's water shinies that are bad. Make sure your air is topped up as much as possible because drowning is just embarrassing. Don't be that guy that can't see the gauge. Even the Zerker gang needs to breathe. So if you get the water line in front of you, point it away from the homies. And if he's going to hold up a color, do the correct thing. Pistol, move to a red tile. Anchor, move to a blue tile. Or you can just do whatever you want and get knocked around the room. Really won't make a difference. But this is the big dick mechanic and he summons two sirens and you have to stagger their bubble off of them and then blow them up as fast as possible. Split it up with party one taking the leftmost siren and party two taking the rightmost. This makes it super easy to deal with. And after that, he's going to begin to cast his break bar. Get all your staggers and all your whirlwind bombs in here and it'll break no problem, even in low stagger groups. He does this two times. So you get through this phase two times and Gangplank is going to be ruined harder than when Riot redid his old splash art. So our second boss in Carcosa is the Pufferfish Enjoy Your Lady. Her big mechanics is if you ignore the Pufferfish, she'll shit on you. So just kill the fish and that's the whole boss. She does like this glyph thing. Don't overlap them. Just make sure the homies have some free space. If you have it, get to a nice spot where you're not overlapped with another one and let everybody else move out of it. And please God, don't spin it around. But she's also going to pick someone up. That's her stagger check. And that's really it. Just knock her out of that before she blasts your homie into the ground and you're done. Other than that, another W key boss. What a surprise. But our final boss in Carcosa is this weird lightning water hydra dragon. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's literally the easiest boss in here. At 16 and 8 HP bars, he's going to do a mechanic 
where he's going to spawn these orb spawners. And you've got to soak the orbs. If he soaks two of the same one, you get one shot. You'll want to make pre-made spots just like this, where we spread out in the circle before you enter the room. And you're just going to move clockwise. That's left for you people who have digital watches and don't know what a clock is. And if one of your party members manages to fail this, think about replacing them because their brain might just be a little too smooth or their dent might just be big enough for a whole can of chunky soup in there. So how you're going to start off is you're going to soak your main one. You can move clockwise and boom, it's super easy. Soak four orbs and you're all set. At the 16th HP bar, you just soak four in a row, just like this. It's super easy. Don't even think about it. But as soon as you get to the 8th HP bar, you have to soak three and then stand still because the orb spawners are going to swap at the last second. So you soak your three orbs, stand still, and you're set. Or you can keep moving because you completely forget it's going to blow everybody in the room up. And if you're full health, it doesn't matter. If you pop a bunch of damage reduction, it doesn't matter. And you just ignore it and just W key the boss. Like I said, he's easy. But the main thing is don't stand in the actual spawner. Stand in front of where it's going to shoot the orb, which is always going to shoot it to the boss. So connect the orb to you. Do not let it connect to the boss. And on that 8th HP bar one, there's going to be a lightning circle around him. Just stand closer to the boss. Don't stand in the lightning circle or you're going to die. The only trick to this is that you're going to be getting debuffs when you're not in this phase of lightning and water. And you're going to have these blue orbs around the room and they're going to move your stack. All you have to do is run into one for how many stacks you have. You got three stacks. You got to go get three orbs. That's it. Face roll, W key, boom, Hydra dead. Move left just a little bit. You'll be fine. Now for our final official dungeon of tier two, Alarax Sanctuary. And the first boss isn't mean. Party split one and two like usual. One gets a siren, one gets the killer whale. Whatever group is faster is going to have to save the other group. You're going to kill the yellow orb and spam ping where you are because of the darkness so everyone can stack up in the light and not get one-shotted by this AoE shit. Once you're done, it's a turn and burn because your whole party is going to be back together and burn down the siren first because this fight is meme easy. The only mechanic she has in the one-shot is a parasite. You stand in poison to remove it from yourself. Never really noticed it, honestly. But the killer whale boy is going to be the main focus because he drops big AoEs that remove your breath and your HP. The safe space, always inside of him. We're going to take a look at this breakdown. He's going to drop his first hit, and then it's going to slowly radiate outwards. So what you're going to do is you're going to let him hit it, dodge towards him, start slamming into him, and you're just going to avoid basically every single one of his mechanics. He's actually really easy. Our second to last boss in all of Raid Tier 2, the Elemental Boy. And he's basically just dodge red and spread out. Don't overlap these circles. Just stay spread. His only mechanic is whoever has a reticle above their head has to go to a pillar that's up. And if you stand on it with his debuff, it breaks it. If he doesn't break the pillar, he one-shots everyone. So don't miss the pillar. I need you to pump. Other than that, you have until he breaks the fourth pillar and casts it again or you die. Also, if you're not full HP and you don't press spacebar at the last second, you're literally just going to get one-shotted. Uh, so either call for damage reduction or pot and get full health and just eat it or end up like this. It's so trash. So this is just a DPS check where the Zerker gang's in full effect. But our final boss in tier three, Big Dick Poseidon himself. Whirlwind grenades are mandatory. You're going to break him so easy with these and bring some Panchita clears random debuffs off. It's also value to bring a stopwatch just in case you can't get to a yellow circle on the ground in time. We're going to go over that in a little bit. Just hit it if you can't make it. But we're going to break it down fast so keep up so that you can W key this man's and be done with all of tier two. So off the rip, blow huge CDs off his Scarecrow or Taunt and just rip through his first 10 health bars. He's going to put an ice circle around run people. If you get it, you run out. So other people can DPS. This freeze is not breakable and it will not freeze the person with it. But if you clip people, it's going to wipe the raid. But then he's also going to be bubbling people and you need to break them out. It takes quite a few attacks. So just actually WP into these people, break them out because he's either going to slam or spear them after and they need to be freed or they're going to get one shot at most of the time. So ping yourself if you get bubbled. That way it's really easy for people to come find you. You can do that just by control left clicking above your head. And after that, you just dodge all his red shit and burn as hard as you can and stay out of any big circles he spawns because they'll freeze you. And that's almost always a death on him. But when he goes to the middle for his break bar, toss whirlwind needs and dump your stagger skills. You break this and then split up into the room the same way we would on the Hydra and kill all the yellow orbs that are coming towards him. If that red bar on the sides of the screen gets to the middle, you just get one shot and die. So the big yellow bros need to be CC'd and the little ones just need to be killed. Super easy. That's all you need to do to get out of this phase. But his last big move is this one shot mechanic. And this is where if you can't get to one of these yellow circles on the ground, make sure you just stop watch and ignore it because you actually will just die instantly. This is the big one shot. And the easiest way we found to do it was to sign two people to each quadrant of the room. So two people top left, two people top right, bottom left, bottom right, same thing. Made it super easy. We wiped like one or two times each time I've done this with fresh groups and blasted it off super easy after that. But you have to know that two people can't stand in the same yellow circle. So every single individual needs to be in their own. There's no hand holding on this fight. So don't do it. 
So if you can get through both of those phases twice, it's a hard burn to zero. And your ult should be coming up towards the end of the fight if you burst it off the start. And he's going to be enraged, going absolutely crazy, popping tons of abilities everywhere. And that's where you're just going to blast him down with the final big, huge burn with all your ultimates. And you're going to finish him with style. And that's what the Zerker gang is all about. Style, big damage, and being the only class that matters, except for our supports. I love you for enabling me.